Hey everyone, Sam here, thanks for joining me. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint a rural mountain scene which features mountains, trees, a meadow, some cows and a stream. Now the inspiration for this painting came from a plein air painting trip I took with my friend Andrew Tischler a couple of years ago and we spent the afternoon painting in a place called the Martukituki Valley which is near the town of Wanaka in southern New Zealand. It was a great day and I've got lots of photo reference and a plein air painting and I've been meaning for the last two years to actually do a studio painting of this so now finally here it is. Now if you're an artist or creative and you're looking to make your own website then check out portfoliobox.net. It's an online website builder where you can create your own beautiful website to showcase your work to the highest standard. And it's really easy to use, you don't need to know any coding, the whole thing works through a drop and drag and there's lots of different styles and templates for you to choose from. You can start building your website right away and then when you want it to go live, simply choose the plan that you wish to purchase. Now right now Portfolio Box are offering a 50% discount on any of their plans for the first year by typing in the discount code SAMERP50 and I've put the link and the discount code in the description box below. So check that out, portfoliobox.net, start building your website today. So I hope you enjoy this video, sit back, relax and let's roll the tape. So as I said in the introduction, the inspiration for this painting started off with a plain air painting trip that I took a couple of years ago and I met up with my friend Andrew Tischler and we went painting together in a place called the Martukituki Valley near Wanaka. Now the reason I love plain air painting so much is that it allows me to capture the atmosphere and the true colours and values of the scene that I'm painting on the day that I was there and it's great reference to use when you're back in the studio. So I'm on my way to Wanaka at the moment and Wanaka is about an hour north of Queenstown in New Zealand where I live and I've got my paints in the back and I'm meeting my good friend Andrew Tischler so we're going to go out painting outdoors you can see these uh, these are typical South Island New Zealand roads here very twisty and turny but beautiful day beautiful scenery there's just an endless amount of things to paint here so I met up with Andrew and my painting project started first of all with Andrew and I trying to find a location to paint there's some amazing views to paint around here, but the weather was a determining factor. We found a nice location, but it was just too windy to paint there, so we decided to head back to another location that we saw on the way. So we just looked at the Rob Roy Valley Glacier. Now we're just walking back to the car and we're going to go find a spot to paint. Hey Andrew! <laughs> What's up? <laughs> we're going to go find the spot to paint. Yes, we are. So we're going to try that, but that was a little bit exposed. Yeah, well. A bit too much wind in there, but it's very nice. But the other problem is, is it's too far to try and get our gear to the spot. Yeah, man. But uh, down here, I think we're going to have something better. We're probably not going to paint here, though, just because it's too exposed and it's pretty windy. And I think our canvases will get blown away pretty quick. But we found a brilliant spot further back from where we came. So I think we're going to head there shortly. Alrighty, so we're getting all our gear set up and about to start painting. <laughs> and if you can see it there, that's the view behind me that I'm going to paint. Lovely stuff. Cool, so I'm all set up, ready to paint in this beautiful little spot here, about half an hour away from Wanaka. And Andrew's just set up over there. <laughs> so we're going to start painting. Cool, mate. <laughs> it's just, that's looking awesome. Oh, thank you. Um, I had fun. That's the main thing. Yeah, for sure, man. I wasn't really feeling it to begin with, nor here at the end, but 
I had fun. You know, I got a good idea to take back to the studio, so that's that's the main thing, right? Ah, that's awesome, mate. It's been a splendid day painting here. <laughs> and all the cows that have <laughs> turned up to watch us paint. So if you've not yet seen it, check out my friend Andrew Tischler's YouTube channel. He's got tons of painting tutorial videos on there, including a video where he took his plein air painting from our painting trip and added more detail to it in the studio. And it's a really enjoyable video and I've put a link in the description below. So check that out. I'm back in the studio now and I'm finally starting on painting this scene of the Matuki Tuki Valley. I'm painting on a 10 inch by 12 inch linen panel and I've toned it with a layer of burnt sienna which just helps to warm up the painting as it comes through the paint layers and really helps with colour and tone. When I begin a painting the first thing I think about are values and value is how light or dark a subject is so I find that the easiest thing to do is establish all your dark values and shadows first. So I look for where all the key values are in the landscape which in this case includes the clouds, the mountain shadows and the tree shadows. These are the main shadows in the landscape. Now I find that by establishing the shadows first you can quickly create a tonal dynamic in the painting and it makes it much easier to add in all the areas that are in light in the scene that you're painting. It also helps to make it easier to get the saturation of the colours right as well. So what I did with this painting is I started by painting the cloud shadows first and these are quite light in value but I consider them shadows. And for this I mix ultramarine blue with burnt sienna and titanium white. The distant mountains are the next tier of depth within this landscape and the shadows are much darker than the cloud shadows. I'm using the same colours that I used in the cloud shadows but with less titanium white which is going to make the value darker. As we come forward in the painting those shadows are going to get much darker as we will find our darkest darks in the foreground and we'll also find our lightest lights there as well. But as we recede into the distance, darks are not quite dark and lights are not quite light as that value scale narrows. So that's something to always keep in mind when you're painting a landscape. When I come to paint the tree shadows in the foreground, I'm using a much darker tone here and it's a mix of ultramarine blue with some yellow oxide. Now yellow oxide is an earth color and you can actually also use yellow ochre instead but it gives that mix a green cast to it. Now trees are some of the darkest values you are likely to find in the landscape, whereas the sky and clouds are often much lighter and are some of the lightest values that you'll find. Once I've marked out all the main shadows within the painting, I then go back to the furthest zone in the landscape, which is the sky and clouds, and I begin painting some of those cloud highlights. And for this I'm using a mix of titanium white with a little burnt sienna which is going to mix in nicely with those cloud shadows. Following that I paint the sky and this is also quite a light value colour you'll find in the landscape. And I've kept the mix simple with just ultramarine blue and titanium white. Ultramarine blue has a red undertone to the colour so it's really good for painting skies. And it's actually one of the colours I use most in my paintings. And by doing this it helps to keep my colours much more cohesive and tie all the zones in my paintings together. Paintings are more harmonious when they contain common colours. And this is often why limited palettes are very effective in paintings. For the vegetation on those background mountains I mix a desaturated green with a combination of ultramarine blue, a little yellow oxide some quinacridone magenta and titanium white. I need to keep this colour desaturated so it sits back in the landscape. I'm using my most saturated colours for the trees and the grass in the midground and foreground and I start painting the areas of the tree canopies that are in the full sunlight. I start with a mix of yellow oxide, ultramarine blue and then some cadmium yellow to increase the saturation. Then I adjust the whole mixture, including the saturation of the colour and the value, 
By mixing in either Conacridone magenta, burnt sienna, titanium white and even phthalo green. For the grass in the foreground I start with these same colours but introduce a lot more titanium white into the mix as well as yellow oxide and Cronacridone magenta to help create that straw colour. Cronacridone magenta is a very useful colour in painting landscapes. It's a bright bluish red colour and great for desaturating greens. The reason being is that red is opposite to green on the colour wheel so when the two are combined they knock each other back. As I'm blocking in my painting I'm mainly using larger brushes to create loose gestural brush marks and this is going to help give the artwork a painterly feel. There's going to be plenty of time later to add detail to it. So at this stage I'm not worried about detail at all. I paint the stream next which is mostly reflecting the sky and then I mark in the basic shape of the cows. The cows are also some of the darkest values in the painting and it's a mix of ultramarine blue with some burnt sienna. Now I consider the blocking in stage of the painting one of the most important parts because it sets the whole foundation for the painting. So this is where you want to check that your values and your colours are all working. Once I'm happy with my painting I allow it to dry and then I can start adding detail to it. Now it's dry I begin to start adding more detail to the clouds, painting in some of those cloud highlights and adding more definition to the cloud shadows. When it comes to painting the shadows in the background mountain I felt that it was coming forward a little bit too much in the painting and that I needed to push it back. So I used the same colours as before but then just mixed in a little bit more titanium white to make the value lighter which then makes the mountain sit back further in the landscape. Once I'd worked on the background I then spent time painting the trees in the midground, particularly the large black poplar tree which is one of the largest trees in the painting. When it comes to painting trees I normally work on them over a few sessions and just gradually build up the detail within them. My brushes and marks also start getting smaller and finer. I used the same colour mix that I used in the blocking in stage which was a mix of yellow oxide with ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow and then also titanium white and cronacridone magenta. But I've made the value a little bit lighter than the previous layer and I'm using a number 3 filbert brush to start building up texture and defining the foliage within the tree. I think filbert brushes are really useful for landscape painting because that rounded edge allows you to create some finer detail or you can also use the broad end of the brush for larger brush marks. So I start building up the texture in the tree with smaller marks compared with the large blocks of colour that I used in the blocking in stage. As I start to build up the form and structure within the tree's canopy you can already see how I'm going a bit more sparingly with the highlights and I'll be adding further highlights later on in the painting. The colours for the grass is a variation of the colours that I used in the tree canopies but with much more titanium white. Keep in mind that grass is some of the lighter values that you'll find in the landscape and much lighter than the trees. So we need to keep this in mind so that the trees stand out. Now once I'd worked on some of the major zones within the tree canopies that are in full sunlight there came a point where I needed to restate some of those darks and the tree shadows. There are some occlusion shadows within the trees, areas that are just pitch black, but then there's also quite a bit of reflected light in those tree shadows and the reflected light which I'm going to paint later on is going to help communicate a three-dimensional form within these tree canopies. I start adding more layers to the grass in the foreground and then I go back to that large black poplar tree to paint some more highlights in the tree canopy. And what I've done here was I'd taken my existing green that I'd already made but then added much more titanium white and a little bit of cadmium yellow. I'm using a number zero synthetic round brush here to paint a few highlights within the tree canopy. At this point the painting was well underway and I then spent some time working on the stream in the foreground, painting the water and the rocks and boulders within the stream. I'm using much finer brushwork here, keeping in mind that the stream is reflecting the sky. 
The boulders and stones within the stream are a low chroma colour and chroma is another word for saturation. So we can keep our colour mixes simple here and I've mostly used combinations of ultramarine blue with burnt sienna and titanium white and I've adjusted the colour as to whether it's in the shade or the full sunlight. I'm able to use an old number two flat brush to paint the suggestion of clumps of grass in the foreground. Old paint had gotten caught in the ferrule and it caused the bristles to splay out. Probably due to me not cleaning them properly, but anyway, they make real good brushes for painting grass. So I do some more work on the grass here and then it's back to the trees again and I'm able to define more of the tree canopy shapes by punching in some holes to communicate gaps within the tree canopies and also just generally filling in some of the negative spaces around the trees. The next thing to work on in this painting are the cows and I haven't really done anything to them since the blocking in stage and that was mainly because I wanted to make sure all the surrounding elements were well underway such as the stream and the grassy banks either side of it. So I'm getting into much finer detail work here using a number zero synthetic round brush and I start painting the cow's fur, painting the reflected light within them and the highlights and then painting the cow's faces. I've kept the colours really simple so just ultramarine blue with burnt sienna for the cow's fur and then for the faces I've used titanium white with a bit of burnt sienna mixed in and for the shadow areas of the face titanium white with ultramarine blue and a little burnt sienna. Once I'd finished working on the cows I could now see an end in sight in this painting and it's a question of just adding more details and a few highlights to get the painting finished. I add more details to the large black poplar tree, just painting in some more of those half tones to define the shape of the canopy more, and then adding a few highlights to the areas of the tree that are in full sunlight. I'm using a double zero synthetic round brush just to paint a few highlights to communicate leaves shimmering in the sun. And then after that I paint some reflected light in the shadow areas of the tree, some cool greens which I mixed using yellow oxide, ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow, a little quinacridone magenta and some cobalt teal. I then finish up the painting by adding in a few main stems and branches in the trees and then just a few extra details within the grass in the foreground and then adding more detail to the water and the stones and boulders in the stream. Now if you'd like to have a go at painting this artwork, check out the blog post that I've written that accompanies this video. It's available on my website and I've put a link in the description below. There's some reference photos there and a full list of colours and brushes that I've used. I also have a full length version of this painting tutorial video which is available for sale from my website and in this video I show you everything including the whole painting process and mixing the colours which I demonstrate on my palette. And this video is also available to watch by subscribing to me on Patreon and I've put all the links in the description below. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did be sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Also feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section below. Now if you'd like to learn more about painting then check out the painting resources I have on my website at samuelerp.com. I have lots of free written painting tutorials that you can paint along with and I provide reference photos that you can copy and use. I also have full length painting tutorial videos for sale from my website including the painting that's featured in this YouTube video. Now you can also get instant access to all of my painting tutorial videos by subscribing to me on Patreon for just $5 a month. As I say you get instant access to all of my full length painting tutorial videos and a new video every month, all for $5 a month and I've put the links to those two websites in the description below. Now if you'd like to see what artworks I'm currently working on at the moment then you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook 
and also my other website samuelerpfeinart.com. Now this website I made just to showcase my paintings and it was built on the Portfolio Box platform. So if you're looking to make your own website then check out portfoliobox.net and right now they're offering a 50% discount for the first year on any of their plans simply by typing in the discount code SAMERP50 and I've put all the links in the description below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Have a beautiful day and I shall see you in the next video.